Hi everyone. Today in this video, let us discuss phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors. What are the precautions, side effects and clinical use of these drugs we will discuss in this video. Phosphodiesterase is one of the cleavage enzyme which is commonly known as PDE. This PDE is a group of enzymes which are classified into different categories like PDE type 1, 2, type 11. So we have various types of PDE enzymes which are responsible for different type of physiological actions. Among these phosphodiesterase enzymes, PDE5 is one of the important enzyme on which few of the drugs are going to act and those drugs which are blocking the PDE5 enzyme activity are recognized with simple suffix ephyl. So we have drugs like sildenafil, tadalafil, vadinafil, avanafil. These are the four drugs which are classified as PDE5 inhibitors. All these drugs are having the same suffix ephyl and these drugs can be used in the treatment of erectile dysfunction as these drugs produce the relaxation of corpus cavernosum. Similarly, drugs like sildenafil can also be used for the treatment of pulmonary hypertension. So sildenafil can be used for both erectile dysfunction as well as for pulmonary hypertension. PD-5 inhibitors can also be used in the treatment of benign prostatic hyperplasia, commonly known as BPH, which is associated with prostate enlargement. In such conditions, mainly alpha-1 blockers can be used. But in severe conditions of BPH, Tadalafil can be used at a dose of 5 mg in those patients who are having both erectile dysfunction as well as benign prostatic hyperplasia. Now what is this phosphodiesterase enzyme? This is one of the cleavage enzyme. This cleaves the phosphodiester bonds but these phosphodiester bonds are present in many of the molecules. Now PDE5 is not acting on all types of phosphodiester bonds. It particularly acting on the cyclic nucleotide phosphodiesterase linkages. For instance, cyclic AMP and cyclic GMP are the cyclic nucleotides on which these type of enzymes can act. But PDE5 mainly targets the cyclic GMP. Cyclic GMP is one of the cyclic nucleotide. And here this is the diester bond formed between guanosine and phosphate bond. Now this cyclic phosphodiester bond is going to be cleaved by PDE5 enzyme so that cyclic GMP is going to be converted into GTP. Drugs with suffix ephyl or the PDE5 inhibitors, they can act on the PDE5 enzyme thereby they can inhibit the enzymatic activity which results in the decreased cleavage of cyclic GMP therefore the cyclic GMP levels are going to be increased with these drugs. So as the cyclic GMP levels are increased they increase the relaxation of corpus cavernosum as well as they also increase the vasodilatation within this tissue resulting in the increased erection. That's why these drugs can be used in the treatment of erectile dysfunction. And even they produce systemic vasodilatation and they can reduce the pulmonary blood pressure. So, so drugs like sildenafil can be used in the treatment of pulmonary hypertension. Now let us see the precautions of password stays 5 inhibitors. First precaution is the hypotension. PDE5 inhibitors can act on the blood vessels and they can produce vasodilatation along with relaxation of corpus cavernosum and vasodilatation of blood vessels. They can also produce some systemic vasodilatation resulting in decreased blood pressure. So hypotension is one of the important effects that can be observed with PDE5 inhibitors. This is more important when these drugs are combined with alcohol since alcohol can also produce vasodilatation. So along with alcohol, PDE5 inhibitors should be carefully used in order to avoid significant hypotension. So these drugs may produce few of the symptoms such as dizziness, lightheadedness and headache because of cranial vasodilatation. And these drugs can also increase the heart rate because of vasodilatation which stimulates a reflex action on the heart resulting in the increased heart rate. So all these effects can be produced by phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors so they should be carefully used along with the alcohol. Even along with other drugs they should be carefully combined for, for instance organic nitrate such as glyceryl trinitrate, isosorbide dinitrate, isosorbide mononitrate 
All these drugs are indicated for the management of angina. These drugs can produce severe hypotension when they are combined with PD-5 inhibitors. So, organic nitrate should not be combined with PD-5 inhibitors. So, they are strictly contraindicated with PD-5 inhibitors. On the other hand, few of the drugs like TCBs, calcium channel blockers and other vasodilators like alpha-1 blockers, they can also produce hypotension but they are not contraindicated with PD-5 inhibitors. Instead, they should be carefully used in order to avoid severe hypotension. So, when these drugs are co-administered with PD-5 inhibitors, the dosage adjustment should be done in order to reduce the hypotensive effect. Second one is the cardiovascular effects. PD-5 inhibitors should be carefully used in the patients with already existing cardiovascular disorders. Because these drugs can produce hypotension and they may also increase the tachycardia due to reflux action. So, PD-5 inhibitors can also increase the chest pain and they also increase the risk of unstable angina and myocardial infarction. So, in those patients with pre-existing cardiovascular disorders, these drugs should be carefully used. Third is the ophthalmic effects. These drugs can also affect the vision and particularly they can produce optic neuropathy. This condition is specifically called as non-arteritic anterior ischemic optic neuropathy. So, these drugs can increase the ischemia, thereby they can reduce the blood flow, which results in the neuropathy. And if this is untreated, it may also lead to some loss of vision. This particular effect can be observed with many of the PD-5 inhibitors, as these drugs can also block the enzyme activity of PD-6 enzyme. This phosphodiesterase type 6 enzyme is present on the retina of eye. So, when this enzyme activity is inhibited, it may increase the neuropathy that may lead to visual defects and finally, it may lead to loss of vision. So, any decrease in the optical acuity should be carefully monitored in the patients who are administered with PD-5 inhibitors. Fourth one is the priapism. This is commonly observed with PD-5 inhibitors but these drugs are going to act on erectile tissue and they produce the relaxation of corpus cavernosum which may lead to prolonged erection. For more than 6 hours, erection can be observed with these drugs which may produce some painful erection. Fifth one is the vestibular effects. Since PD-5 inhibitors produce hypotension, you can also produce some vestibular disturbances. These drugs may produce tinnitus some budging noise in the ear as well as they can also produce some hearing loss. So, in those patients with pre-existing vestibular disorders, these drugs should be carefully used. Now, let us the side effects of PD-5 inhibitors. These drugs mainly produce headache because of cranial vasodilatation and they also produce flushing, increased redness of the skin as well as face. Another important side effect is the dizziness and lightheadedness produced by these drugs. Because of cardiovascular effects, they can also increase the chest pain and induction of unstable angina. Even they can produce some dyspepsia, indigestion, they can also produce some back pain. Other side effects mainly include nasal congestion, they can also produce some pharyngitis and loss of hearing is another important side effect that can be observed with this PD-5 inhibitors. So, these are the important precautions and side effects of PD-5 inhibitors. Particularly, these drugs produce dizziness, lightheadedness increase the heart rate and they can also increase the chest pain and increase the risk of myocardial infarction. So, in the patients with cardiovascular disorders, these drugs should be carefully used. And because of hypotensive effect, these drugs should not be combined with organic nitrates, but with other vasodilators, they should be carefully used. These drugs may also produce loss of vision and hearing loss. So, in the patients with pre-existing vestibular disorders, these drugs should be carefully given. So, that's about the precautions and side effects of PD-5 inhibitors. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.